like turn that off and like ask to film us instead of just coming in here as the doctors for like you know it's like a clinic so you can't just like barge in here with the camera it's an invasion of privacy Last week, Ada Slavinsky joined us to speak about some other left coast lawlessness pot pizza happening in the Vancouver region. Now, apparently, she's she's in, getting kicked out of or invading some sort of hospital or surgery facility or Burning Man type setup clinic. Ada, what's going on there in that clip? <laughs> Well, Anthony, what this is, is they call it a marijuana dispensary. Uh, I would say that dispensary seems to me to be a bit, a bit of a misnomer. What they're really doing is selling marijuana. Uh, there's at least 23 of these so-called dispensaries around the city of Vancouver. You know, within a 10-kilometer radius, you can easily find three. Uh, so I, was, I drove around and, and checked them out because these places are actually illegal. Uh, even though Health Canada does allow a certain amount of medical marijuana, uh, if you follow their protocol and you have proof from a doctor that you actually need this stuff, uh, these places basically just sell them um, illegally. So instead of having drug dealers on the street, you have a nice storefront uh, with a sign advertising your services and folks can go in there and, and just purchase marijuana. So illegal operations. Uh, so I wasn't storming uh, a doctor's office. I was uh, just checking out something that's going on illegally in the city of Vancouver. And what did you find there? Did you speak to any of the people who run the dispensaries, any of the business owners or the on-site medical practitioners? I did, I did, and they're uh, very well aware that this is illegal. I'll play you a clip from uh, Daniel Petrov. He's the director of MedPot Now, uh, one of the clinics that I visited. You run this cannabis dispensary. I'm a director here, yeah. Uh, you're aware that this is actually illegal? Uh, yeah, our lawyers told us it's technically illegal, yeah, absolutely. So how can you continue to, to operate this in Vancouver? Uh, when we got involved in it, I got involved about four years ago, and uh, I'm not from the industry, I'm from outside the industry, and it seemed like an opportunity at the time. So, Ada, what's going to happen moving forward with this then? If they acknowledge the legality of it, it's out there in the open? Well, there's more and more popping up. There's one just down the street from our office. It's scheduled to open next week. And this is all because Vancouver police have said time and time again that policing pot is not a priority. You know, every time I call them up, I feel like I should just get one of those talking dolls that you pull the string and, you know, the, the policeman says, oh, policing pot is not a priority because it's the same line over and over. And so we're getting more and more people taking advantage of what is a business opportunity and running these shoddy operations. When you go back uh, to the back of the clinic, uh, some, some places did actually let me in to take a look back there, the folks running the operation are, are very high. Uh, you can tell just by looking at them they're smoking the stuff and it's not something that they deny either uh, they told me themselves you know we're, we're really happy working here wink wink nudge nudge uh, and, and I think there's there's a lot of concerns uh, around this uh, one being that we don't know the quality of the drug that's being given out some places advertise uh, you know joints sold for one dollar two dollars uh, so you know they say it, it's not even the greatest quality that's that's you being imagine sold. the community has you know they're always rating hey, you can get some good stuff here or there. I mean, if there's more cropping up, I guess it seems like they're kind of, you know, there's going to be online guides rating which one has, has the best goods or something like that. It seems like there's oh, a, there there's a sector out there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's a menu. Um, one of the, the places I went back, they, they didn't let me film back in the in the room there, but it looked like, uh, you know, the David's Tea where they pull the different jars off of the shelf and you can smell it. Um, so you, you have your choice of medicine. Uh, some places, well, they all say that they require a prescription, but, you know, after talking to some of the patrons, uh, a lot of them admitted to me that they don't have any sort of prescription. Uh, these dispensaries will often issue their own uh, membership cards, so basically a little laminated uh, card that you're part of this club and you're allowed to purchase marijuana. Uh, a young man went back there and he looked to be about university age and I asked him, you know, what are you getting uh, this for? And, you know, he said, oh, nothing. I just, uh, I like smoking it every day. But, you know, there's this kind of wink, wink, nudge, nudge, um, kind of mentality that goes on when, when he's back there purchasing the stuff. Oh, you know, for, for sleep and pain, right? You know, nudge. It's, it's absurd. It's illegal. And police are going to have a much harder time putting this back in the box uh, after letting so many of these places open up and, and letting this go on for so long. Uh, do you see any desire for them to put it back in the box? Because it seems like they're just kind of letting it happen. 
Exactly, and that's what we saw happen in, in the states as well. There was a lot of these, uh, you know, medical marijuana dispensary storefronts uh, that opened, and then once marijuana did become legal in certain states, you know, they just take out the medical out of the name and continue operating. Uh, so I think that's what we're seeing now in Vancouver is the preparation for legalization. Uh, police are, are trying out this, this new approach, this uh, lax approach to policing and, and letting this happen, and, and the industry is setting up and it's already there, and it's, it's going to be a lot t tougher to regulate, you know, even if uh, we do get to the point that this is legal, you know, for police to come in and start imposing standards on an industry that really has no standards at this point is, is going to be tough. Um, and there is concern from, from all folks, not just people who are against marijuana. I spoke with uh, Jody Emery, and she's one of the lead uh, marijuana activists pushing for the stuff here in Vancouver. And, and here's what she had to say about the state of mar medical marijuana now. Medical marijuana is kind of a hazy phrase right now, if I can use that pun. A lot of people just go to the dispensaries that are advertising around town and they're told they only have to provide proof of an ailment that medical marijuana can be useful for. So it's basically saying, well, Health Canada agrees that marijuana is useful for what you've got, but we're going to save you the hassle of finding a proper doctor, filling out the paperwork, and we're just going to acknowledge you have an ailment, so here's some marijuana. Um, that can be abused, but I think I think people only abuse a system if they're not able to get proper access otherwise. So there are people who are going to dispensaries who have medical marijuana cards who technically, under the law, have no protection whatsoever. Uh, you only have legal protection if you're part of the federal system. Right, we're actually all out of time, but I, I want to thank you for that report and for, for getting those clips from Miss Emery and everyone else. And, and, you know, rhetorical question. I mean, you were reporting about the pot pizza. We know there's all the uh, not-for-profit groups that are handing out the various drugs. We got these now. You know, I'm kind of wondering in that region, where can you not buy drugs? But I guess that's a, it's going to be a question for another week. <laughs> Thanks very much, Ada Slavinsky. Thank you.